Hello. I, okay, that's good. How are you? Great now, seeing you. Now we're going. Good. Uh, I only see on Sundays usually. <laughs> so first of all, Green Bay's brand is, um, you know, they don't generally, they don't really fire people mid-season. They're, they're not, they're yep. not that coastal sharks, Wall Street, give me money. Green Bay's like likable and community oriented. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they fired their GM and they still gave him a cubicle. <laughs> right. Okay. Mike McCarthy thing. How did it play in the league? Oh, played really bad in the league. I mean, you saw guys like Mike Zimmer came out straight out the the number of texts. I talked to Mike McCarthy right after he got fired and he was kind of, you know, and this is my Mike McCarthy imitation. I think his, his response back was, were you guys kidding me? Like, he's like, you know, he still has that Pittsburgh, you know, he's like, you guys, you kidding me? And he's, and I think there's a right way to do things in this league for guys who deserve it in a wrong way. And I believe this was the wrong way. And the reason why, and I understand people saying, and look, sometimes these, these relationships end and yeah, it should have ended. I think we all saw it coming. He saw it coming. But the way it happened, I think, was wrong. Where a guy like a guy like Tom Coughlin, when the Giants knew they were going to move on, Tom, how do you want to do this? Let's do this the right way. Tom wants to step away. Great. Andy Reid, how are we going to do this? We're we're going to mutually part ways. A guy like Mike McCarthy, I think, deserved. I agree with you. That. You can yeah. make I th- you can make that argument. And, and by the way, for them to say, well, we wanted to get a jump on our head coaching search, that is a crock of garbage. Everything's done back channels in this league. You don't suddenly say, well, my head coach is fired now, so now I'm going to start looking. That is such a cop. We can get a head start. You can't get a head start because you still have to comply with the Rooney rule. Yep. You can't go talk to guys who are still on teams. That is such a cop out. And everybody who believes that that's the angle, they, they need to know better okay, than so that. Okay, so, Jay, why do they do it that way? Uh, I think that um, – I don't know. I don't agree with it. A- Aaron- and again, frustration boiled over with them. And, yeah, they weren't going anywhere fast. But, again, it's just you got to look at the overall history. How many playoffs did he make? I mean, they named a mm. street after him there. It's ridiculous what he's done there with – remember this, too. And, and this is the part that people forget. When Brett Favre was there and Brett went – it went from Brett to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Brett made it really bad on Aaron Rodgers. And really bad is really underselling it here. It was really – it was filthy on how bad it was. For Aaron Rodgers. Why? And Mike, it's just how Brett treated Aaron and how it looked. It was Brett's team. And and Mike McCarthy then went and moved on to Aaron Rodgers. And even when Brett wanted to come back and was doing interviews on Greta Van Susteren, Mike was the one who said, I'm sitting there, I'm sticking with Aaron. And I'm building him up. And he built his confidence up. And that place, everybody bombarded the Packers and attacked the Packers. And Ted Thompson didn't want anything to do with it. No one else in there wanted to do with it. Mike McCarthy is the one who put himself front and center. He's not exactly a PR guy. He put himself front and center, stuck up for Aaron, built Aaron up, built up a Super Bowl championship team. There was a lot there the guy had done to deserve to not get whacked right after this game. Story comes out, Jeff, Saturday. You know him. I know him. Good quality guy. Probably didn't love saying this, but said when I was there, Aaron would roll his eyes Mm -hmm. in the huddle. For the record, those were the good years. Green Bay was like 13-3 and those years. I wonder how that plays. That doesn't doesn't play well. You know, look, Aaron, you know, and I think the next coach, too, and people want to say, oh, who's who's the next coach going to be? It's way too early to tell. And I know the Josh McDaniels. I, I can't believe people are even jumping on, oh, Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels had a job last year and bailed that effort. He had the job. So let's not – let's pump the brakes here on, any, on ever believing that Josh McDaniels would do anything. Um, but there's two ways to look at it. Some coaches will look at this job and say, man, what a great opportunity. I get to work with Aaron Rodgers. And he is maybe the greatest thrower in the history of the NFL. Right. Not quarterback, thrower. I still think that's Brady. Yeah. But – you could also look at it and say, if I go in there, am I going to really be the head coach? How much is how much authority? Am that's I a real have? question. Yeah, that's a real. That's a, that's a serious question, and I think there are certain guys who will fit better than others. But you know, there's, I think coaches will convince themselves, oh my gosh, this is great. This is I get to coach Aaron Rod. I mean, you want one of these jobs, but yeah, there's there's pitfalls to it without a doubt. Aaron's not the most, it's not the easiest guy in the world to, I mean, you, you have, know. you, you deal with a lot of players and I deal and- with Aaron. I personally like Aaron, you know, he, Aaron's trained with us over at unbreakable. He's, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's great, you know, but to be great, you got to be crazy, right? You got to be off. You cannot be great and not be off. And that's where, you know, I think Winston Moss said, like, you have to keep guys in check. McCarthy were trying, you got to check them. You got to check the great. That's where Belichick and Brady are so great. They challenge each other. They check each other. You know, it, it is interesting, though. I, I was saying, to me, a great job in the NFL, and you'll really have insight on this, Jay, um, 
is number one, ownership and right. st- ownership oh, yeah. stability. More than anything. Yeah. Number two is, do I have a quarterback yep. I can inherit? And not like Breeze for two years, but I feel like Carson Wentz, I got nine years, I'm right. riding with yeah. this guy. The third thing, I don't want a total rebuild. Give me a roster with some players. I don't want to have to rebuild my O-line, my D-line. So San Francisco last two years ago, that was a total rebuild. Right. If you stack those up, stable owner, eight to ten-year quarterback without a rebuild, I contend there's not a ton of great jobs. I think Philadelphia is a hell of a job if it was open. Rams right now, stable ownership, quarterback roster. I don't know if Green Bay, Jay, is a great job. Yeah, they don't he, have an owner. Yeah, they. well, Mark Murphy is now, you know, acting as the owner, and, and he's building up all these things around um, – Lambo and trying to build it more, kind of almost like the Joneses are doing down in Dallas. And I don't know how much that really fits because it should be more of a, an ownerless team. This is just, you know, the, the way the Packers were always run, it's worked for a long time. Um, is it a great job? Free agents don't yeah. like it? Well, it depends if you like snow or not. I don't. Well, here, here's another thing, Jay. I don't he, like the cold, so for me, it's a terrible job. But Stan Kroenke <laughs> is an owner. Stan will come down and say, get me in Dominic and Sue. Right. There's no owner in Green Bay. Well, so, but he, here's, it was pretty funny too, but just going back to McCarthy. There was a year that Tony Gonzalez was trying to get out of, yeah. of Kansas City, right? I've told this story here. Yeah. And there were two teams that he was basically traded to. It was Green Bay or Philadelphia. <clears throat> and, the, and the Chiefs were also asking his take. And so McCarthy's calling me saying, hey, you got to convince Tony to come out here to Green Bay. And I said, how am I going to – he's a Southern California kid, <laughs> and you want me to convince him? He goes, oh, we got so much culture out here. And I'm going, Mike, you got snow and then not snow. He goes, no, no, we really – I said, he's from Southern – he's from L.A. here. He goes – and, and he, I said uh, – he goes, no, we got like – I said, what do you have? You have like gangs out there? He goes, you were getting a gang issue. I said, what do you have, like snowball fights between the Bloods and the Crips? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it was just but the way he was trying to sell it. But he, well, he did such a good job of, you no, know, the Reggie Whites and, and the from that – you know, class of free agency too. all the history there. And Gonzalez was in for a guy who was so Cali. He was all in. He was bought into to Green Bay. Mike did a great job of selling to me who was, and, and his agent who was kind of selling to Tony out there. But yeah, I mean, I, I love Green Bay uh, and Wisconsin is one of my favorite places on the planet when it's not snowing. Yeah. And it generally is it's generally snow. this yeah. point for the next six months. By the way, um, the Texans have won nine straight. Yeah. They're always under the radar. I think a big part of it's Deshaun Watson. What else is going on there? Because they've they've yeah. always been good. They've never been this. Right. You know, it's funny because I, I just talked to – first of all, they have J.J. Watt back, which I talked to J.J. yesterday for a q and I did for The Athletic uh, this morning. And, you know, here's a guy who last two years – didn't know if he was going to come back. I mean, he went through some really bad injuries. Right. And it was almost like they've gone how he's gone. His confidence has gotten bigger, and he's played better, and they've gotten bigger and better. And he started to become more of a defensive player of the year. Everybody else is starting. I'm not saying it's based on him, but they've all got him together. But the biggest thing is they shouldn't be here because the way the drama was going the last couple of years, it's amazing Bill O'Brien is still there. Yeah. There was such a power play there with Bill O'Brien and Rick Smith, the former general manager. And everybody in the league was convinced there's no way Bill O'Brien wins this. And Bill O'Brien was convinced there's no way I win this, that the owners are always going to go with Rick Smith. It was so toxic there. And really in the 11th and a half point nine 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 hours last year, surprisingly, they made, no, you know what? We're going to go with, we're going to go with Bill. And I know that, you know, they put it, they said there were other things there. Rick was having personal issues, but this was always a power play. And if they ever went the other way, they would not be here right now. And Bill is, again, we talk about challenging. He challenged Brady when he was there. He's challenging Deshaun here. Deshaun is is different, but he's still very competitive, hence him playing with oh, a partially he's collapsed a, He's lung. a huge part of Deshaun Watson's oh growth. Very much so. Very, and it, he's they're not very, asked- he's, he's, Bill is very underrated for what he's done because he went through so much drama there for his first few years. Now there's no drama, and look what this team has done. Yeah. No, they're really fun to watch, too. Yep. Deshaun is a, supposed to be a great kid. they got a little bit of a running game. They've always had a good defensive front. They've, they've all, they're have they've a little bit like the Rams. The names sometimes are better than their defensive production. Now they're humming defensively. Yeah. Uh, Jay Glazer, founder of MVP, merging vets and players as well. It's great seeing you. You too, buddy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.